Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I will be reacting to Limit Break. What was it? Bubsy versus Gex. And I have never heard of these two. Well, I don't hear of Bubsy. I heard of Bub. I swear to God, I start playing music. What you're dying tonight? What? God damn. You know, that'll be. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I had to check up on something real quick on Google Plus. But anyway, Bubs. Oh, cool. You can see the little strip right there. I'm not sure if it catches it on camera. But that's pretty cool. But anyways, um, Bubsy versus Gax. I have never heard of Gax. I heard Bubsy on a versus. On a versus show before. I think it was like Bubsy versus Biggs. From Sonic. Um, yeah. I'll put a link that I'll put a link that video in the description below. But anyways, um, um, I think it does have reality, like physics, br physics breaking abilities, which I don't really remember too much of that. Should I watch it. I should have watched um Bubsy vs Biggs before I reacted to this video. But yeah. What's going on with this video right now? The nineties, a revolutionary age for many things, especially gaming and technology. Gaming had a number. Scots, like Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Earthworm Jim, Pikachu, Banjo, and Donkey Kong. Yeah, just Pikachu. But the industry had two titans. Two titans famous for many things, but one thing, one thing in particular. Famous for being kind of garbage. Yeah. It clashes between the pun-making perfectionist Bubsy Bobcat and the TV-obsessed wisecracking gecko known as Gex. Bruh. I'm your host, Joe. And I'm the co-host, Britt. And today we're putting two of the most infamous characters in video game history against each other to see who would win in a fight. And without further ado, let's get on with the episode. Maui is just one of the many beautiful islands in Hawaii, full of lush jungles, beautiful beaches, and it's also the home of Gex. Gex was raised here really? by his mother alongside three other siblings while his dad was a researcher for NASA. Gex was the oldest hey. of his three siblings, so he spent most of his free time with his friends, surfing and throwing parties. But this was all changed for Gex when his mother received a phone call from NASA letting her know that a rocket containing Gex's father had exploded in the landing pad due to a band-aid floating him on the fuel tanks, ultimately resulting in all on board the rocket dying. Understandably, <laughs> this shattered the hearts of Gex and his family. Gex's family dealt with their loss by crying and other things of that nature, but not Gex. No, 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 no. Instead, he took a different cry. Room. He bottled up his emotions and took refuge in front of his TV to comfort himself. A little Badasses while was don't feel emotions at all. Became very worried for him. She tried to separate him from the TV, but to no avail. She decided that a change of scenery would be good for Gex. So Gex and his entire family moved out to Encino in California to the new home surrounded by white picket fences as well as white supremacists. Whoa, you can't say that. That that bit was straight out of the manual. Don't shoot the messenger. Let me see that. Oh damn. Carry on. Even when he was in California, <laughs> Gex was still through the TV. His mother made the most obvious way she could get to that. the TV away from gypsies. I didn't read that. Once Gex found out about his precious TV being given away, he ran away, stating that he would never step foot in that TV-less house ever again. For a few months, Gex hooked up with local punks while he stayed oh, in one of his friend's garages. And to make money I told you that's in the script. Gex started doing errands for frustrated housewives. Doing errands? Yep. Oh! Those errands. Oh, those errands. Away, Gex's mother found him and informed him of the passing of his great uncle Charlie. Charlie had left his family with his fortune of twenty billion dollars. Where did he get twenty billion dollars? <laughs> his uncle Charlie was the original model for the eyes odd shirts, and he had invested the money he made doing this back into the company. Damn it, just geckos. With all of this money, Gex's family decided to go on a shopping spree, doing things that you'd expect, such as buying Australia. 
Gex didn't care for things like that, however, so he made what? the decision to go back to Maui and buy the biggest house and fill it with the world's biggest TV set. In a matter well, of days, like Gex was in front of his new TV set and watching on a bowl of flies. Not much longer after this, Gex was bored of all the same programs that he'd seen millions and millions of times over. One day, while Gex was going through TV channels, a fly came by and Gex had caught it with his tongue. That fly was a metallic transmitter that was sent by Rez, the lord of the media dimension, who was planning on making Gex the mascot of his dimension. Shortly hmm. after swallowing the transmitter, Gex's remote jammed and his TV went blank. Before Gex could figure out what was going on, Rez grabbed and pulled Gex into the dimension where he had to get out of here! Channel collecting remotes so that he could shut off the channel behind him and eventually make it to Rez's inner sanctum. Once he'd made it, Gex and Rez battled, which led to Rez's defeat. However, this did not stop him from turning into a ball of energy and leaving. Gex escaped wow. back into his house, where he promptly decided to retire from the public eye in 1996, and for two years he did just that. It was just Gex and his TV, but things would not stay like this forever. It all came to an end when two secret government agents showed up and began questioning Gex about Rez. Hmm. Turns out that Rez had showed back up and was trying to take over all the TV channels. God Gex damn it. was the only person that could stop him, and after being convinced with a briefcase full of cash and his own secret agent suit, Gex agreed to go back to stop Rez and foil his plans of mm. complete media domination. Why the hell would you let yourself be convinced to get back into the media dimension? I just realized this, and I can't remember. Um. I just really, my camera is upside down. So, yeah. Let's get on with this right now. It's like the original Sword Art Online. <laughs> Wait. Sword Art Online copied Gex. Why has nobody been complaining about this? <gasps> it's a conspiracy, Joe. We need to reveal the truth about how the game industry plots have been taken and made into animes. Hide the body, hide the body. Please just stop talking. Theories can come later. But Joe, if you die in the media dimension, you die in real life. But then there's the fact that if you die in the game, you die in real life. Don't you see the similarities? Shh. It is Sword Art Online. So, Gex went through all the channels again, leading to the fight with the Rez, and Gex defeated him How again. How did that really exist? TV on him and trapping him in it. Gex confronted Rez, who was trapped in the TV, and tells Gex that he is his father. And that he looks the way he does oh, because like, he uh, like, while trying uh, to get free game. Darth Vader did. Knowing this was a lie, Gex turned up the TV, trapping him inside of it. Oh. Gex returned home and the same thing happened a while later. He was watching the news, got contacted by Agent Extra who tells him she'd been kidnapped. He joins the dimension again <sighs> through an entrance in his Gex cave. And for a To third the Gex time, cave! He saw the channels, confronts Rez, defeats him. This time he kills him and explodes into tiny little pieces. Okay, That's finally. Story. Here's the thing. Doesn't actually end. The, my mom called me and I had to do something real quick. I swear to God, the birds don't stop. Oh yeah, I got birds. Bing. One sec again. One, two, three. Slow down so I can do this. And to hear... I'm back yet again. The birds. My birds are a pain in the butt, but I love them. But anyways, let's back this up five seconds. And yeah, let's get on with this, right? Here's the thing. Doesn't actually end there. It ends with Gex and Asian Extra in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. You know, good old-fashioned gecko fun. <coughs> Gex, yeah. during this time, ignores a call from his turtle butler, Alfred, who told Gex that the world is in danger once more, and he was the only one that could stop it. It's official. Wow. I just went from somewhat respecting this giant gecko to now thinking, wow, he's a dick. Yes, he is. And duty calls, I, uh, I suppose. Considering he's a bit of a slob, Gex does have some pretty impressive and powerful moves. Gex's saber move would definitely have to be his tail whip, which he's built up his power over time thanks to years of batting pineapples around. Oh, I'm thinking of the Pokemon tail whip. His tail. The strength of his tail is quite frightening. With just one swing from his tail, Gex was completely able to destroy a 5 by 4 foot stone wall. At most, this would require 7 kilojoules of force. Gex can also use his tail for other things. He can perform a tail bounce, which is useful for bouncing up to higher places or squashing an enemy. But it can also be used to propel him into his tail kick move, or can just really be used to traverse long gaps or holes. Also, it can block projectiles. 
That's kind of cool. Oh, Gecko. Gex has a very impressive tongue. A move for the ladies at sea. <coughs> you can use it to swing back and forth. <coughs> granted, it sticks to a stick. <coughs> but the most important thing that Gex's tongue can do is the tongue lash. This allows him to snag the power-ups he uses. The blue fly gives him ice powers, freezing his enemies, but not killing them until he acts on it. The red fly allows Gex to spit fireballs and can completely burn his enemies into ash in seconds. Ooh. Though these can be deflected. Oh. The last fly is the yellow one. Now this one allows Gex to fire bots of electricity in three different directions, and upon impact, this simply electrocutes his foes. However, Ooh, Gex has shocking. more than his flies for power-ups. It can also eat a centipede, which kicks Gex into overdrives and gives him super speed, being so fast that he can create after images. This would probably put Gex's top speed at at least 200 miles an hour. But by far, Gex's most powerful power-up would be the Caterpillar. When Gex eats this, really? a tornado appears around him for 20 seconds, and this tornado attacks enemies and prevents them from attacking him. He hmm. can use this power along other power ups too. And if Gex can't win a fight and needs an escape plan, so mainly you can go instead like Gex other on the face, power ups on walls, top of it. And them. even on ceilings, thanks to his suction cup feet and hands, or even travel through static portals. Though hmm. Gex does have the option to run away, he just doesn't do that. Gex chooses to laugh at danger. With that attitude, there's no surprise that he's managed to beat Rez three times and kill him. Oh. Gex is also seen just about every TV show ever made and has managed to remember all lines from these shows and even films and is able to quote them whenever he pleases. Gex is also very durable, being able to survive an explosion from six sticks of dynamite that are each four foot long, as well as taking hits from anvils and safes falling on top of them at high speeds. Not only oh. that, though, he's an awesome golfer and has played with the likes of My Sodan and God. What, for real? Of course, everyone goes out for a game of golf with the boys at least once a year. Even with that, Gex is not without his fair share of downsides. First off, Gex never takes anything seriously and will quote a TV show or movie constantly. Though Gex is a great fighter with much of attacks, selection is lacking in the close quarters combat department with his moves relying more on mid-range with his tail work and long ranges with fireballs, ice balls and electricity attacks. Gex's mm. long range attack can cause problems for him too. To use them, he needs to find a power-up item, and he will lose his long-range attacks if he gets hit once. Huh. Brave, brilliant, beautiful, these are just a few of many words used to describe the great Bubsy Bobcat. Okay, Joe. Why ask me to show up today if you're just going to analyze both characters? What are you talking about? Weren't you the one just talking? No. Hey, over here. He got fourth wall awareness. Run. Finding the culprit. You don't need to look much further. Dear God, we've been breached. I'm getting the gun. I told you my conspiracies were right. <laughs> they want us dead. Ah, uh, I think I know who you are. Why don't you introduce yourself while my pal's away? I'm the one and only Bubsy Bobcat. Okay, now I got you. Oh wait, you're Bobsy. <laughs> well, that doesn't make any sense. One of our fighters is talking to us. There's these pesky force walls that I see all the time, and I just, I just don't like. This is only the know. second episode. The cat's gotta live his life, so I just give it a little nudge, and the cat's out of the bed. More like the cat's over the wall, but you get the point. Oh yeah, Bubsy breaks the fourth wall like all the time. Oh I'm yeah, we're gonna mention that. I haven't even talked about him yet. Just keep feeding his ego and tell everyone about him. And my ego is very, very hungry. Okay, okay. Well, honestly, not much is known about the origins of the young life of Bubsy Bobcat. But in 1993, he hit the world and took it by storm with the instant classic Claws Encounter of the Third Kind. This took mm. us to the distant planet of Rayon, the homeworld of the race of aliens known as the Woolies. The Woolies were known across the galaxy for their lust of war. Being led by their two queens, Polly and Esther, the two plotted a course to Earth to steal all of its Rayon. Right they vacuumed up all of Earth's world, or so they thought. Amongst the wool, was him. That's right, and I took it all back. That's not true. They launched out of the ship and back to Earth. There's some truth to it. Once Bubsy was <clears> on <throat> yeah. he went through 16 challenges that the Woolies had set up to stop him, and he beat them all. He fought and defeated the Woolies Queen, Polly and Esther, and took all of the Earth's rule back. After this, Bubsy took the adventure scene easy for a while, only having a small adventure where he helped Virgil Reality get back his Virgil Reality helmet. From a cat known as Allie and a henchman who had stolen. Ooh, uh, no man, she's sick. decided to go on a trip with his niece and nephew, Terry and Terry. 
Don't you ever get them confused? Nope. Even if I say the wrong name, I'm still saying your name. Bubsy scores one. The relatives score zero. As I was saying, oh. he was also there with his friend Arnold the Armadillo. Oh my god. Going to the town of Meepin to visit the Amazatory, which is a creation of a business partnership between Oinka P. Ham and Dr. Virgil Reality. Okay, that's a good time for a commercial. That was literally a good spot for a commercial. This theme park would run on Dr. Reality's Wampa, also known as the World Origination and Matter Projection Machine, which would allow the park to simulate wonders of human history. So realistically that you wouldn't believe it was a simulation. And that's because huh. it wasn't a simulation. Oh. It turned out the Wampum was stealing the world's history, and Oinka P. Ham was planning on using it to make a fortune. It was up to Bubsy to go throughout history and stomp Oinka P. Ham for stealing it. Bubsy beat Oinka P. Ham and all of his goons after going throughout history and battling him while he was in his mech pick. But even with the mech pick, Bubsy brought Oinka P. Ham down and locked him and all of his goons up in jail. In the same year this happened, Bubsy went on yet another crazy adventure. This time, Bubsy has been tasked with saving all fairy tales. Bubsy traveled through fairy tales, battling the likes of the Mad Hatter and Hansel and Gretel. He also what? rescued Mother Goose, ultimately assuring the safety of all fairy tales. But yet, just a few years later, in 1996, Bubsy went on his most infamous adventure yet. Bubsy was kidnapped by the Woolies once again. Deliberately, this really? time, thanks to his first adventure. He was brought to the homeworld of Rayon, where he would escape from their captivity, collect atoms, and find pieces to a rocket ship that he would use to escape the planet and get back to Earth. When Bubsy finished what? the rocket and escape, it didn't really go as well as Bubsy had thought. Due to the amount of atoms in his fur, it overloaded the rocket's engines, which sent Bubsy back into the past. Really? The Woolies then plotted really? their invasion to head back to Earth and steal all of its food. Since Bubsy could no longer stop it. What a great story! Keep going! I insist! I feel like our hero is going to save the day! That was the ending of your origins. You know that, right? Ah, yes. Sometimes I get so caught up in the beauty of the story, I end up forgetting the ending. <laughs> that was a magical tale! <sighs> I, I don't know how much how longer could I you? can take the two of you. Can, you. can you please move on? I'm... please. Keep talking! Let's go through my awesome abilities now. Well, for Bubsy to do the things that he's done, he has a lot of powers and abilities to talk about. Most of his standard platform stuff, such as his standard jumping attack onto enemies or his opponents. This attack is surprisingly powerful enough to completely crush a car to where there is nothing left at all. Though when what? this is done, it launches Bubsy into the air. I bet the audience doesn't believe me. I make the virtually impossible possible. Honestly, Bubsy does make the impossible possible. It sounds like Uncle like Grandpa. Bubsy has the ability to glide through the air with the time depending on the height of the jump point, or speed at the point of jump off. That shouldn't be possible, obviously, as well, you know... This is Bubsy we're talking about. Glide. Speaking of more things that he shouldn't be able to do, well, as being able to breathe and walk in space. Bubsy can survive the temperatures of space. Keep in mind that the temperatures of space is negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit. Why? Oh, and don't worry, Bubsy can also handle the heat! He is able to ride a red or orange lava river without having any problems. Orange lava, being the hotter of the two, has a temperature of around 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Also remember that fourth wall breaking I brought up earlier? Well, Bubsy doesn't just break it by thanking the game developers. He does it by tearing a hole in his own manual and coming out just to complain about how Stephen King didn't write his manual. If Bubsy needs more than just his paws, he has a few weapons that he carries on him, such as his exploding corn dog, which is just a stick of dynamite covered in batter to be disguised to look like a corn dog that will explode once the fuse of the dynamite is used up. Also, for product placement's sake, he carries around a Nerf Bolzuka. This weapon can yeah. have fancy sized holes and wooden doors and can be used in vehicles such as his World War I biplane or his spaceship. But this weapon is limited to just a total of 99 balls of ammunition. Another thing Bubsy mm, carries around no is a television remote, which he can use to mess with the settings of whoever's playing this game. This is a little bit more of a useless weapon than a useful one, but it's still part of his arsenal. Bubsy hmm. is not just relying on the weapons he has on him. 
But the power-ups he finds on his adventures, such as the Shadow T-Shirt, which is simply a black T-Shirt that makes Bubsy invisible for around 20 seconds, also allowing him to attack with his power-up too. And when sneaking is not an option for Bubsy, he can find a T-Shirt with a yellow exclamation mark. When he puts this shirt on, 20 seconds, Bubsy becomes invincible and can just walk over weaker enemies to kill them. Though Bubsy is not invincible really? by any means and requires some defensive abilities, if Bubsy needs to go on the defense, he can pick up the light shirt. This surrounds Bubsy with a lightning wall for 20 seconds. This will kill anything that makes contact, but if backing to a tight spot, and Bubsy needs to take out a large number of enemies at once, he has the smart bomb. This weapon creates a large oh, really? flash of light that defeats the enemies that are caught in the blast radius of the bomb. But if Bubsy needs a smaller explosion, all he has to do is look to his friend. Here he stores atoms that he can throw, which on impact will create explosions. And finally, if Bubsy needs really, to make a smart bomb. reaction, he can always use the portable hole. This allows Bubsy to escape from whatever place or period he is in and jump back to his present time. But Bubsy the brave, magnificent... Joe, please stop him from messing up the script. Never! I thought that I would liven it up with some facts that you left out. Just pretend that he isn't here. Come on, that's what I do with you most of the time. Ouch, but all right. Bubsy isn't the so one above kept the run from danger. He has saved the world from Oinka Pete Ham, and in the same year saved all fairy tales by rescuing Mother Goose. And defeated the Woolies twice. Once huh. on their own home world. He was also capable of assembling a fully functional rocket out of parts he had found randomly, and powered it up with atoms to escape Rayo. Granted, it did send him back in time. So I eh, guess so he made a time machine instead, but Bubsy's biggest claim to fame would be his durability. Whoa, easy there. Don't do what I think you're gonna do. Not the game mechanics. Don't worry, Bubsy. We understand. It's like how Crash Bandicoot dies in one hit in his games. But that's not his <laughs> durability, it's just game mechanics. It's weird how people complain about Bubsy being weak with only being able to get hit once, but a fine with other characters. Well, back to Bubsy's actual durability. You see, Bubsy has a little access to something called the Tomb Force, and he uses it from time to time oh to make enemies throw him out of their spaceship, and he proceeded to plummet and hit the ground. Judging from what we can see, we can assume that Bubsy fell around 27,000 feet. Not only that, but Bubsy has also been stepped on by his niece and nephew when they were giant. That impact left a crater bigger than Bubsy, which he actually had to climb out of. Bubsy is not invincible, and he does have his fair share of weaknesses. Huh. Egg if. I don't have weaknesses. So, yeah. what about water? Uh, that's more of a fear than a weakness? With Bubsy, uh, yeah, this is different. Put a guess he can't swim. Like Sonic. Meaning he will drown when he is in water, unless he has on a special diving suit. Bubsy also has a big problem with his ego. He thinks so highly of himself, that even though he is more intelligent than a lot of people give him credit for, he just comes off as a crazy nut job. Bubsy is also quite selfish, really? putting himself and his needs before anyone else's. Okay. Such as when he went to the Amazatorium to save his niece and nephew, but really he only went in there after them because they had taken the potato salad they had packed for lunch. <laughs> Damn it! Give me my, give my potato, potato salad! For his wants and needs than anyone else's. Now that we've analyzed both of our five... God damn it. I got this. I want my food back. Just... Just let it happen, Brit, and hopefully we won't have to see him ever again after today. Now that we've analyzed these two fighters, let's well, push welcome. them to their limits! He may come back to Hold season on, two. A fight I need to get to. Don't worry. Oh, yes. What do you mean by nostalgia? Population two? You look old. Have you been left behind? V Bubsy Bobcat! Just behind? You gotta be kidding me! There's no shame in being cancelled. I've been through a bunch of shows. Like Firefly. You're pressing my- How could you? Don't make me turn you into a scrap post. I'll have you know that I'm returning next month for my new game, pre-order link, in the subscription box. That's it. Stop with the puns. It's still time! Easy, Tiger. I've never fought a feisty lizard before. What could possibly go wrong? Of course, he used a sign. I hope you like the place. Of course, you use a sign. Taste my tail. A TV set, huh? Whoops. Whoopsies.
Hey ho! Surf's up. Bro, just chill out. Kraken. Wow. He is very about something. <laughs> the winner of this fight is Bubsy. Yes! 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 That's right, admire me! This was definitely a very interesting matchup. Gex did take the versatility and strength advantage almost immediately, but Bubsy took durability, intelligence, ironically, and most of the other categories. Most of Gex's power-ups, such as fireballs, ice balls, and his lightning, Bubsy is fairly resistant to these moves. Fire resistance hmm. comes from the high temperature tolerance. Oh yeah, Bubsy right. can ride on lava rivers. His resistance to ice comes from Bubsy's resistance to the temperatures of space. And last but not least, Gex's lightning? You see, when Bubsy retrieved the Virgil Reality Helmet, it short-circuited and electrocuted him, and it really didn't affect him at all. Don't get us wrong, Gex could certainly defeat Bubsy with these moves. It's just due to Bubsy's resistance to a lot of these elemental moves. But it's fairly safe to say that Bubsy could deliver the final blow before Gex due to his resistance to his ranged attacks. Durability was pretty much the deciding factor for this fight. Most of Gex's impressive durability feats, like getting hit with an anvil at high speed or being blown up by the large sticks of dynamite, gave us the runaround for a very long time. This was until we realised that this happened on the Toon TV channel. In theory, Gex would have some form of temporary Toon Force loss in this channel compared to if he was on Scream TV, which is the horror channel or another channel. This was huh. an incredibly tough fight to decide an outcome to, but after putting things together piece by piece, Bubsy's durability is a lot more consistent than Gex's. With Bubsy having more consistent durability and strength only slightly behind Gex's, hand in hand with all the other categories that Bubsy has over Gex, it is safe to say that the winner of this fight is Bubsy, Bubsy Bobcat. Oh, thank you. You are just too kind. I'm coming back for season two. What? Oh my god, please don't tell me this is hard for you. What? How is the face with Michael Myers? Ugh. Hey there, audience. If you enjoyed the video, please I subscribe, hate horror. smack that ding bell, and leave a like. Don't forget to check out the animators and the voice actors, too. Stay perfect. No. No. This might be a cat tax cat tax catastrophe. There we go. Yes, this is right. But yeah. Right below me there's Bubsy versus Biggs. That's the episode that I'm talking about. But yeah. I mean to to be half honest, I read like, I knew they have Tomb Force, Tomb Force, Fourth Wall Awareness, and all this other abilities. But I didn't know that Bubsy actually had those other abilities that I didn't heard of. But anyways, next limit break will be a horror theme, which I got no idea. I got no idea who those two are. And if you are, um, and if you remember, well... If you subscribe to my older channels and watch one of my other videos, I specifically said I hate horror, horror games, movie, movie, horror games, movies, shows, commercials, anything that's horror related. I hate it. 
literally, I hate it so much. But yes, guys, that will be it for this episode, um, this reaction. If you like my reaction, call, please punch the like button, phone, computer, tablet, where you need to watch this video, punch that screen, shock, shock that like button, shock is so hard that it never feels, shock is so hard that it never comes back. And comment down below what do you want me to react to, and I will do it whenever I get the chance, but without do peace out and don't forget to check out my patreon you already know the you already know the rewards and all in case you don't know here is the last here here you go just in case you forget boom boom and boom but yes that'll do it for this reaction if you like it if you like it do what I just said follow me um support my patreon if you want to and good night the internet.